Mikudo Bada. Um, we are Hosu Yellow Bagan. And we want to speak very briefly about the concept of re Africanization. Um, as you know, at Gun Loda, we are about the whole concept of re Africanization. We're not the only ones that are about re Africanization. We may be the only ones that you see. Um, but to re-Africanize means that we, we, we've, had, we've had some history as being African, and then we've lost touch with that. And so our goal at Gun Lodo is not just re-Africanization, but full re-Africanization, as some others say they are about, and um, full sovereignty, which that, all of that is intergenerational work. So you have to be able to work from a perspective of, of knowing that you may not see the results that you want to see in your lifetime, but you know that you did what you're supposed to do as an African to re Africanize yourself, your family, and set that up for uh, generations to come behind. Um, what we want to address is the concept of re Africanization and how far do we go? You know, um, there are those that are part of the re Africanization movement, if you want to call it that, um, that want to exclude some parts of being African, um, which, is, which, is, which is quite interesting because why use the term re Africanization if you're excluding parts of re Africanization? That doesn't make any sense. Some of them would say things like, um, you know, we don't need a, a monarchy. We don't need kings. Uh, some would say we don't need kings, but then accept chiefs. Some would say we need we don't need uh, kings or chiefs, which that makes that's more consistent, you know, still incorrect and still anti-African uh, thinking, unfortunately, from coming, you know, if somebody that's, you know, really claiming to be about re-Africanization, but they're, they're doing that, then that is anti-African thinking. So, um, it's, it's like one of your cake and eat it too, so to speak, that, that phrase, um, people talking about re-Africanization. How are you going to re-Africanize and your, your diet is composed primarily of European or, or, or various other non-African foods? Primarily, you know. We're not saying that people should, should not try other foods, eat other foods, or whatnot. But most of the diet is primarily uh, non-African. When we go, well, when we used to deal with Ishe Shea people uh, back in the day and uh, go to their festivals and whatnot that we were invited to. Um, the only festivals that we saw that w where they served African food were uh, at this one uh, uh, Yoruba, uh, Babalawo, and Chief um, there in Atlanta uh, when he was there. It's the only time we would see and get African food um, outside of being able to, you know, go to a, 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 and we're talking about West African food, you know, um, outside of being able to go to a restaurant. Um, so people are saying, you know, if, if we're going to say we don't need kings, chiefs and whatnot, let's go ahead and say we don't need priests. Let's go further and say, since we don't need priests, we don't need shrines. Um and let's go further and say, well, we don't need ancestors. Then you have no tradition. So even though a lot of these people, they may claim to be Maroons, uh, nationalists or whatever, and they're saying that we do not need kings, chiefs, and various other things that are intricate to being African, you know, um, They're being anti-African. That's not Maroonage. That's not uh, being truly new African on the political level. That is not being a Maroon. You know, 
It's just not. Um, we're not. We're not just saying this because we are a monarch. Um, we were saying this before. Anybody that's familiar with our works before 2010, when we were crowned, know for a fact that we've always said this. You know, uh, we must respect our royal institutions. Now, here's the here's the the key. The key is the royal institution must respect the people because the royal institution is the people, and they are there to protect and serve the people and provide whatever they can for the people. What we're building now at Gunlodo is intergenerational. It's like Oramian, uh, who founded Oyo. He founded Oyo with about probably no more than 20-something people. The Oyo became this big empire 300 years later, a little bit before that. Uh, so somebody, Oramian, and others were thinking intergenerational when they founded Oyo. Oyo was this little small little village, but it was a it was a considered a monarchy, but it was small, very small, and then it became this big thing. And the same with Dahomey, when Abome was founded, and the like. Um, so we're not, you know, we're not thrown off by not having numbers, and we rather have quality over quantity any day. And that's the problem with some of these, well, most of these other monarchies and elays and whatnot because they're, they're trying to get numbers and followers versus the quality of person that they need to help them build. 